are talking Metal Storm, the destruction of Gerard Sin. Somewhat of a spoiler in that title, I fear. And this is a 1983 movie that was directed by Charles Band. Charles Band, most notably known as a producer on the Full Moon movies. Here he actually directs with his father, Albert Band, doing the producing. So actually got a few recognisable names here. You have um, Richard Mole and uh, Jeffrey Bryan, who went on to start in um, Rage War uh, after this, year after this, also with Charles Band. But you've also got supporting roles from Tim Thomason and um, Kelly Preston in one of her kind of early roles here. Now, the story has been described as a mix between Star Wars and Mad Max. I can see why people would say that. It, it, it really, to me, is very similar in a way to the movie Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone, that kind of aesthetic. But in reality, it's a space western with lots of kind of like western tropes in the movie as well. We'll discuss a little bit further. So what's the story? We have this kind of uh, mining planet, essentially, where there is these crystals uh, that are very valuable and can, you know, can some of them contain power. And um, Dojin is our kind of our main hero here, and he's essentially a wandering lawman. Uh, and he has been sent to deal with Jared Sim, who is a kind of ultimately a, a warlord, a bandit leader, who is trying to take control of the region and keep the resources for himself. Along the way, he meets uh, Kelly Preston's character, who is the daughter of a prospector whose father is murdered. And uh, we also get a supporting role from Tim Thomason, who is kind of like an, uh, a retired lawman who he's trying to coax out of retirement to help. But we also have uh, the kind of stand-in for the Native Americans here with Richard Moles, uh, kind of leader of these Cyclops people who, are, who kind of act like the, kind of the Native American, the more spiritual people of the land and things like that. And then uh, all these kind of uh, characters will come in flux with each other. What will happen? You have to watch the movie to find out. Spoiler alert, this movie sets itself up for a sequel that never actually happened. So what do we think? I've got to say, on the positives first of all, it's a somewhat of an ambitious project for obviously a well-known uh, B-movie production company uh, with kind of lots of things going on. Um, you know, lots of kind of attempts at having uh, special effects in regards to speeder bike type um, vehicles, various different kind of alien races, some quite good prosthetic makeup in regards to some of the uh, the effects works done here, uh, and a whole host of characters with influences taken from uh, you know a good few areas. To be to be fair, the actual uh, adventure itself, I've got to say, is is a, is a pretty sh fast moving. Uh, swashbuckling affair with kind of lots of um, action set pieces and kind of colourful characters. Uh, there are a, a few standouts here. Tim Thomason is always uh, watchable and you can see why he went on to be kind of like a mainstay of uh, Charles and Albert Band's, uh, you know, family of films there, obviously going on to do the Chances movie and things like this and various kind of other kind of like full moon productions. Uh, but I've also got to say uh, the character of Ball, who is the the kind of the son of our main bad guy, Jared Sin, who is this cyborg who and, and the good thing that the makeup effects here are are pretty good. Um, you know, especially for a, a, a early 80s kind of low budget science fiction movie. They're, they're quite impressive as to are, I think, the prosthetics for the Cyclopses, where they, exactly, they, they still look good by today's kind of standards. You know, you, I was also impressed with some of the scale here. We have lots of kind of like Mad Max kind of Road Warrior style vehicles. You know, lots of kind of like car chases. Uh, you know, lot of, lots of wide shots with a, a good few extras and things like this. And we, we are introduced to a few different sort of styles of, of character through the movie. And I have to say, even though he's, he's never become a particularly huge star, I do enjoy uh, Jeffrey Bryan as... Um, our kind of our main, main character, Dojin. Uh, you know, I, I thought he was really... I really enjoyed his character in Rage War, for example. Michael Preston, who plays Jared Sin, I think is unfortunately hamming it up way too much as the kind of the bad guy, who, to be honest with you, barely in the movie. 
Uh, he's in it so little, uh, you wonder why his name is actually in the title itself. It seems a little odd. And there are some other actors here that, that do uh, that do also suffer it from a little bit too hammy. One of the other criticisms I have of this movie, it has virtually no characterization. Uh, we're introduced to a, you know, a variety of different characters and we kind of go on this journey with them with knowing next to zero about them. So it, it's really hard to kind of get invested because we kind of start going on this adventure with a character that we really haven't established. Um, so we really don't care. And the aesthetics are very much um, uh, of other films. Like I said, I mean, Dojin's character himself looks the spitting image of... Max from the original Mad Max movie with his kind of like his, his leather gear on. There's, there's no real attempt to have any identity at its own, but borrowing, you know, liberally, as I should say, from the Mad Max series from Westerns, and I suppose you could say a little bit of kind of Star Wars in there as well. The, much like the characterization, I have to say, the actual plot itself is very kind of like muddled and contrived at times, with things just seeming, seemingly to happen. For example, there's a scene where um, Jared Sim. Uh, captures the kind of like the love interest, Kelly Preston's character, who has literally nothing to do in the movie other than just be a damsel in distress, by the way. And he just kind of appears uh, through magic and kind of grabs her and then disappears and then leaves this kind of like glowing monster in its wake. It just like, it just happens, you know. They're just in the middle of the kind of the wilderness anyway, and yet he's managed just to suddenly appear, find them and, 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 and kidnap her. But then it, if he could, had, could do that, it seems he would be ultimately unstoppable, but never kind of uses that again. So the movie is, is fraught with problems in regards to logic. It seems like it was, <clears throat> you know, and I guess it's true to say some of, the, some of the films in the kind of the ages and stuff weren't really, they didn't really think too much about um, continuity and, and, and logic and stuff like that, especially the kind of the lower budget ones. Despite all this, I think the movie is still quite a fun film to watch in a knowingly kind of B-movie schlocky way. I mean, you can't really defend this movie and say it is, you know, it's well made in regards to uh, the things that I've critiqued it on, I, I personally think. But you can still enjoy it on a kind of a cheesy, fun level. Um, i got to say, I think if, if we look at, you know, say the same kind of like actors and and, and production come. I, I think personally, Rage War and Dungeon Master were, was a far more fun film because I think the we did a bit more of the character work there. Uh, to be to be honest, um, ultimately this movie it, I think is somewhat forgettable, but it's still kind of it's a bit like when you all the slew of sword and sorcery movies. There was a few that kind of just stood out if you're a B movie fan, and a few that kind of like got lost in the shuffle. And this is the same with the, maybe the sci-fi movies. This one feels like it's one that's got lost in the shovel. Whilst I have really fond memories of, for example, Battle Beyond the Stars, this one I, I don't remember as much because it was it was just a little bit of a kind of a, a mess overall. Realistically, it's not a good movie. I'll give it a four out of ten, but it has some enjoyable factor if you're going going into it with your B, B movie hat on. Four out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.